So uh, yesterday we were thrilled with a very epic clash between two great clubs in England and that was Manchester United hosting Arsenal. So this game ended 1-0 uh, win for Arsenal and it was a game that Arsenal really needed to win in a ground where they don't have quite an impressive record. And this game we are going to see how tactically Mikel Arteta managed this game and how Manchester United actually created some sort of problems for Arsenal because we expected an open game. So Mikel Arteta in this game was quite pragmatic, unusual from what we usually expect free-flowing attacking football from Arsenal with Mikel Arteta noticing that this is a very difficult ground for his team and where he needed the win to keep up with Manchester City. So Mikel Arteta picked up this lineup. The lineup was a 4-3-3 and uh, the inclusion of Tomiyasu at left back was quite not uh, uh, unusual and a surprise and the inclusion of Thomas Partey in midfield ahead of Jorginho. Also, the inclusion of Leandro Trossard with uh, Martinelli starting from the bench was also a huge surprise. But Asen Mikel Arteta knew what he wanted in this game. And we are going to look at how he managed to manage this game to secure a vital win for his title hopes. On the other hand, Eric Ten Hag, who had suffered a very devastating loss against Crystal Palace, actually managed to start a lineup that he was forced to start because of the injury issues at Manchester United with rumors that some players are actually not uh, wanting to play for him and are not are hiding from the injury and uh, this lineup included uh, Casemiro uh, also starting again at center back with uh, Ten Hag preferring him over Kwambala and uh, Amrabat making a start in this game with Scott McTominay playing at the number 10 position. Notable exclusions are uh, players such as uh, Fernandez, Rashford and the backline of Martinez who is also not uh, quite fit enough to get back into the starting 11. Before we continue, I'd like you to like, share and subscribe to this channel for more videos like this. So we begin with trying to analyze what Manchester United did in possession. We are going to look at how Manchester United managed to dominate possession and the chances they wanted to create because they had majority of possession. So initially in the first phases of play, Arsenal were pressing Manchester United aggressively high up the pitch and actually pinning Manchester United back. And this really uh, made it difficult for Manchester United to actually even play from the back. And in the initial five minutes, Arsenal used to retain the ball and actually win the ball as a result of their effective press against Manchester United. But when Manchester United were in settled possession, this is how they would build up. Either you would find Evans looking to drop alongside uh, Casemiro in the back line with uh, Onana pushing forward. But Arsenal deploying this 4 for 2 diamond press where Rice pushes forward and they use Havertz and Odegaard to press forward. This system really uh, made it problematic for Manchester United during build up, especially when they tried to build down the left with Evans and Diego Dalot, who Manchester United had identified as players who are playing with their weak foot. And because uh, Arsenal had identified this weakness, Manchester United decided to adapt this situation and this was aided by dropping Evans into that number 6 position and having Diego Dalo moving into a slightly wider position and using Onana as an extra centre back. Now Manchester United had players in midfield and this forced Arsenal to start not uh, to push Declan Rice behind and Manchester United had the opportunity to actually play through Arsenal and this was one of the great strengths that United showcased. The passing accuracy of Onana together with the coupling passing accuracy of uh, Casemiro and the backline ensured Manchester United were easily built through the first phase of play. Now when Manchester United managed to build this, uh, this through this space, we are receiving uh, Onana looking to play those balls over the top, especially down the right, where McTominay will be drifting to receive the ball and use his physicality to win the ball over Ben White and try to have um, Ganacho win the ball, or Diego Dalo would receive the ball and look to carry it forward if Bukayo Saka decided to tuck in to try and cover. 
So Arsenal decided to be in a passive press to allow the ball to progress further ahead so that Onana cannot be used during build-up. And Arsenal in this position look to retain their 4-4-2 with their two players looking to press the two Manchester United centre-backs aggressively to force them to make that rush pass, uh, rush pass back to Onana where they could go back and look to try and press Onana aggressively. Now, because of this 2v2 uh, overload that Arsenal created, Manchester United had to come up with a way, and that way was dropping Amrabat in between both centre-backs and splitting both centre-backs wide. So now we started to see Casemiro and Evans playing wider, with Amrabat playing in the middle. This would free up space for the two full-backs to push forward as a result of the two wingers cutting in, that is Garnacho and Diallo moving in field, and one Bisaka and Diego Dalot moving forward. And what Scott McTominay will drop in midfield to form that uh, two alongside Kobe Mine. And uh, you could see that uh, Diallo in this position will look to receive the ball in these inside channels. And you can also see the position of Aaron and Bisaka. Now, because of Amrabat playing in this uh, extra, uh, giving Manchester United that extra player in the back line, Arsenal's front two could not press because now they were pressing against three players and that is usually difficult because Manchester United overloaded them. Manchester United also formed that box midfield but this time with their wingers in field and uh, this gave Manchester United a natural advantage in the wide areas but down the left Arsenal's Leandro Trossard will play well but down the right Arsenal had problems because uh, Saka who had pushed forward to look to press uh, Johnny Evans allowed uh, Ben White to be overloaded 2v1 with Scott McTominay and Alejandro Ganacho. And that's why Casemiro, once he received the ball, his main pass was to play that ball into that uh, left-hand channel where he anticipated that McTominay would look to win the aerial duel and Ganacho looked to win the second goal. And this was quite devastating for Arsenal. Because initially in the first half, that is what would happen. And now Ganacho will receive the ball and look to run at Arsenal's backline. With Ganacho having majority of the chances in the first half. You can see from this position, Ganacho and McTominay have managed to win the ball off Ben White. And now Ganacho is looking to try and go and press us and try to score against Arsenal. In this position, you can see him cutting in and he's now facing Saliba. And actually, Saliba did well because he managed to cover a lot of these uh, cross-field uh, passes, especially trying to limit Ganacho's influence in the game. Because if Ganacho had proper angles, probably he would have scored the goal for Manchester United, thanks to Saliga, uh, Saliba who managed to contain him in that game. And Manchester United looked very dangerous, even sometimes Hoyland looking to drop deep to receive the ball. And once he's received the ball, spaces open behind him when Saliba follows him. And Amrabat looking to play that ball in behind, especially for the runs of Scott McTominay. And because Arsenal went ahead earlier on, they decided to sit in a 4-4-2 rigid deep block. And this rigid deep block uh, was just to try and contain Manchester United as they were trying to limit them as much as possible. You can see here Arsenal in a 4-4-2 mid block, looking to only engage Arsenal once they cross their own half of the pitch, with Arsenal looking to control all the faces of play. Manchester United, you can see here, are dominating possession, committing a lot of players forward and looking to target that left hand side. And Mikel Arteta had to make tactical changes from this. He decided to use his two forwards rather than pressing the two center backs to sit on the two double pivots and having his wingers to drop momentarily back whenever they played, uh, the ball was played on their side to try and double up against the wide overloads being created by Manchester United. And Manchester United, their problem was that their fullbacks are not quite aggressive under threat in these wide areas and that's why Arsenal was not afraid. And once Arsenal would win the ball off if Manchester United am tempted to play the ball forward, Arsenal were not afraid to immediately launch quick and swift counter-attacks against Manchester United. And this one really created a lot of problems for us, uh, Manchester United in the transition moments. So what about Arsenal? What did Arsenal did do with the ball? They had 45% of the ball, which is quite considerable. 
But Arsenal are quite unique. They would uh, either with Manchester United looking to press them in a 4-2-3-1 system. Arsenal would try to look to play from the back either by having their two centre backs split alongside Raya. Though Raya really played a lot of long balls, looking to try and play those balls for the runs of Bukayo Saka because he identified that Saka would outpace Manchester United's entire backline, and that's why uh, Arsenal tried to go long time and time again. But to when we know how Arsenal usually like to build up, and uh, Manchester United would sometimes be passive, and Arsenal would manage to build. Uh, in slightly higher up the pitch without Raya and what happened is that we started to see uh, Rice pushing into that left half space position and Tomiyasu looking to invert in that midfield position. You can see from this clip the position of Saliba, Ben White and Gabriel with Tomiyasu looking to invert, invert from the left back position to come in and try to play alongside Thomas Partey with Rice pushing forward. Here again you can see Arsenal are building from the back but this time it is Thomas Partey who has dropped in between the two centre backs to give them numerical advantages over Manchester United. Arsenal would stagger their double pivots and this would really create problems for Manchester United. But down the right is where Arsenal looked quite dangerous because we know very well that Ben White looks to try and overlap in this position, allowing Bukayo Saka to cut in and allowing Odegaard to also float in that position. So this is something that Arsenal have been doing throughout the season, overloading that right hand side with Saka, Ben White and Martin Odegaard. And because of these overloads being created in these wide channels with constant runs from Ben White looking to try to overlap, Manchester United's team had only one, one job to do and that is try and shift across to cover this problem. And when they shift across to cover these problems, this will now open up Arsenal's left hand flank where Leandro Trossard would receive the ball in acres of space. And that's why even in the first uh, goal, he was the only player who rushed in to try and score because in the wide areas, when Man United were committed to press Arsenal down the left, Arsenal will now be looking to try and attack Manchester United's left hand, uh, right hand side with Trossard. So this is a very, overall it's a very good uh, result for Mikel Ateta as he will be looking to try and hope his local rivals Tottenham can do him a favor and actually take points off Manchester City as Mikel Ateta will be trying to have his team lift a Premier League title after 20 years. If you've enjoyed this analysis, do not forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching.